Tapia is a routine of exercises for shoulder osteoarthritis. Welcome or welcome back to Age Fit with Tess. My name is Tess Halbauer, physiotherapist. By the end of this video, you are going to know how to complete a routine of scapular mobility exercises for shoulder osteoarthritis. This video is part three of the shoulder osteoarthritis exercise series linked in the description and at the end of this video. Join the Age Fit with Tess Facebook group to get further support managing pain, building strength and gaining fitness. To book a consultation or apply for the Age Fit with Tess four month program, head to www.agefitwithtess.com. Let's get started. Starting with scapular elevation, sitting in a chair, shrug your shoulders up, then relax. Repeat eight times. Scapular elevation is one of 10 movements of the scapulothoracic joint or how the scapula moves against the thorax or back. From the posterior view, we can see the scapula or shoulder blades rise up with the shoulder shrug. The second movement is scapular depression. This time, complete a reverse shoulder shrug, moving your shoulders down instead of up. Repeat eight times. From the posterior view, we can see the scapula move down. Movements of the scapula against the thorax occur from the joints that connect the scapula to the clavicle or collarbone and the clavicle to the sternum. The third movement is scapular protraction. With your right arm outstretched, keep your back straight and reach forward. Use your left hand on your shoulder as an aid to avoid hitching at your shoulder while completing protraction. From the posterior view, we can see the shoulder blade move forward around the rib cage. Repeat with your left. During this video, each scapulothoracic movement is shown. However, it is important to note that multiple scapulothoracic and glenohumeral joint movements typically occur together to produce functional movement of the shoulder. Again, reach forward, thinking about the shoulder blade moving forward around the rib cage. The fourth movement is scapular retraction. With your right arm outstretched, keep your back straight, aiming to bring your scapula or shoulder blade toward your spine. Again, use your left hand on your right shoulder as a cue to avoid hitching. From the posterior view, we can see the scapula move in toward the spine. Again, bring your arm back, thinking about bringing your scapula in toward your spine. Repeat with your left arm. Because the glenohumeral joint and scapulothoracic joint work together to produce functional shoulder movements, to achieve the best outcomes of exercise for shoulder osteoarthritis, it is important to incorporate both scapulothoracic and glenohumeral joint range of motion and control. Links to videos one and two of this series are in the description and at the end of this video for additional routines. The fifth movement is upward rotation. With your arms by your side and elbows bent, bring your hands over your head to cross them. Repeat eight times. During upward rotation, the bottom of the scapula rotates away from the spine and up. When completing scapulothoracic movements, complete with no or minimal increase in pain from resting. Avoid moving into any range that causes sharp pain. The aim is to increase mobility over time. Again, bringing your hands over your head, thinking about the bottom of the scapula rotating away from the spine and up. The sixth movement is downward rotation. Again, with your arms by your side and elbows bent, bring your elbows into your side. Downward rotation is the opposite of upward rotation, where the bottom or inferior angle of the scapula rotates toward the spine and down. Because functional shoulder movements consist of many movements using multiple joints, improvements in mobility, strength and function can be slow and frustrating in comparison with other joints of the body. Go at your own pace, stick with it and celebrate the small wins as you see them. The seventh movement is internal rotation. With your elbows bent, raise your arms to 90 degrees shoulder flexion and slightly out to the side. Turn your hand down. Repeat eight times. You should feel the inside or medial border of your scapula stick out slightly or wing from your back as you complete this movement. If this movement is too aggravating to complete, 
It can also be completed with your arm by your side. The eighth movement is external rotation. In the same position as internal rotation, this time turn your hands out. Again, this movement can be completed with your arm by your side if it is too aggravating to hold your arm at 90 degrees. You should feel the medial border of your scapula push in towards your back as you complete this movement. Again, rotate your hands out. The ninth movement is anterior tilt. With your arms by your side and elbows bent, bring your elbows back behind your body. Anterior tilt describes the top of the scapula tilting forward into the back. From the posterior view, you should see the inferior or bottom angle of the scapula stick out from the back. Again, bring your elbows back behind your body. The 10th movement is posterior tilt. With your arms by your side and elbows bent, bring your arms up and back behind your head. Again, if this overhead movement is aggravating for you, aim to move within your pain-free range of motion. Here, the inferior angle of the scapula is pushing in towards your back. Remember to join the Age Fit with Tess Facebook group to get further support in managing pain, building strength and gaining fitness. If you are unsure if you have the right exercise program put together, make sure to get your complimentary Age Fit with Tess self-assessment to identify if you are meeting 10 key components of a successful exercise program. Head to www.agefitwithtess.com to get your copy. Subscribe for more videos like this and to continue to build your fitness and strength in the meantime, watch these videos right here. See you next time.